Hey everyone, uh, so we are recording. This is um, a, a lecture on chapter two of the web development class at Rankin. And um, I believe I covered this already, but in your repository, in your student repo, now here's my my student repository right here. It's called All Web Dev Coursework, and then my GitHub username. Um, there's the HTML fourth edition folder, and then there's slides, and then there's chapter two slides that have been revised. So that's what we're going to be going over. And just jump ahead, we got about 34 slides. And so when I when I introduce a chapter, I always like to talk about okay, what are we going to talk about today, and why is it important? And that's how I like to start these lectures. And so when you're looking at chapter two, its chapter title is how to code, test, and validate a web page. And so chapter two is really about learning the fundamentals of H HTML. And the, the first 40 days of this class, we're learning HTML and CSS. And when you look at the outcomes, you know, everything in here um, is talking about HTML and will create some CSS, but we're focused on HTML. I would say majority of this chapter um, is HTML, but then actually, yeah, there's no shortage of CSS either. So, so really we're learning the fundamentals of both. And so there's a lot to be covered in this chapter. Uh, I'm looking at two and a half hours until the end of class. I would estimate this, this video is probably a majority of that time. Um, but but these are just the the absolute foundation uh, uh, of these languages, and so it's hard to go on to chapter three without the foundation of chapter two. And so this is this is a really critical chapter for for this whole semester. Um, just the language that we're going to learn, the the terms, and and also you know how to how to write this code. Um, and so we're going to learn the different pieces of an HTML document. We're going to learn about these things called tags, HTML tags, uh, what are attributes, uh, comments in white space. We're going to learn a CSS rule. So HTML has tags, CSS has rules. Then we're going to learn these things about what are, what are CSS selectors and what are the types of selectors. We're going to cover that. Uh, how to run and test a web page, and then validating your files. And so uh, we're going we're to cover a lot of information here. Um, but again, these are the foundational concepts of how to write HTML and how to write CSS. And so on slide four here, um, On slide four, I, if I'm looking to the side here, it's just because I'm, I'm scanning for questions and I'm seeing people type. So I'm just making sure. Um, I'm wondering if the stream is, is coming across, across clearly. So we'll see what people say. Hopefully the stream is clear. Uh, are you guys able to tell what's going on or is it is it choppy? If it's clear or unclear. Let me know, just type. It's clear. Great, okay. Um, when, I, when I first learned HTML, I learned it at a, at a pretty young age, and there was an analogy that always helped me remember this slide right here. Um, and again, I learned this at a young age, and so uh, this is kind of like um, a, uh, a silly analogy. But when I'm when I when I see this slide and, and what we're looking at here is HTML and there's something 
that I always remember that helps me remember the structure of HTML, of an HTML document. And so uh, what this is silly, but I always think of to, to start writing HTML. This is silly, but I think of, of a cheeseburger. And, and you're probably going, what are you talking about? How does a cheeseburger help you remember the structure of an HTML document? And the answer to that is, well, when you think about uh, the components of a cheeseburger, obviously the, the outermost area, you have the bun, okay? The, the, the bun in this scenario are your HTML tags. So if you look at, if you look at the tag, which is the tag has the uh, angle brackets, Okay, so uh, let me open up Visual Studio Code here, and so you can you know what I'm what I'm talking about. These are the angle brackets. This right here, you know, the less than and greater than sign. Can you guys can you guys see as I'm typing here in Visual Studio Code? Can you see this? Okay, cool. So the angle brackets are just these guys: the less than and greater than sign. Okay, so this is an angle bracket, so that's that's just a term. And when you see the an opening and a closing angle bracket, and you you get uh, something in between there, you know that's that's called a tag. That's an HTML tag. It says it couldn't it could be bigger. And so I don't know. Let's see. Control plus. Hey, look at that. So the HTML in this case, everything on the cheeseburger goes in between the buns. So in this scenario, the HTML tag, the opening tag, this right here is your opening tag on line one. The closing tag is on line four. And so when, when you look at this slide, slide four, you'll notice you got the opening and closing HTML tag. Okay, those are your buns on your cheeseburger. Okay, uh, then of course we have the meat, and the meat is our body tag. Notice how Visual Studio kind of, I type a tag, if I type in body, and then notice how it automatically put in the closing tag. A closing tag has the forward slash as part of it, so HTML opening tag, HTML closing tag. That's your bun. The body tag, opening tag here, closing tag here. And if you think of the meat on a burger, um, that's that's the main part of the burger, right? Uh, so so the body tag is the meat. And this is a this is an HTML. Whoops, let me undo that. That's the wrong hotkey. This right here in gray. This is an HTML comment. So you, you can put comments in your code that are not, you know, the browser does not look at the comments. They're just for, they're just for developers to see, it's like some notes about your code. So the way that a, an HTML comment is made is with an angle bracket, an exclamation point, and two hyphens. And then it, it's two hyphens and an angle bracket. Uh, greater than angle bracket here, and then your comment goes here. Comment here. So the body, the body tag, is for your web page structure and content. If you remember back to chapter one, we said that HTML. We said that HTML is for these two things. We said that HTML is for defining your page structure, which is, you know, what what goes up in the header of the page, what goes in the footer of the page, what goes in the nav bar of the page. You know, that's your structure. You know, kind of like the structure of your house, where the rooms are. You know, the structure of a page is, you know, where's the sidebar? How big is the sidebar? That's your structure. And then the content is your your images, your text, your uh, uh, when I say your text, your, your, your paragraphs, your headings, your videos, that's your content. So the body is the meat, and the meat really, when I say the meat, I'm talking about the structure and the content. Inside, uh, 
still inside the buns, we also have the HTML head tag. So you'll notice the head tag opens and closes above the body, which kind of like you think about a human does, you know, obviously the head is above the body. That just makes sense. And uh, when I think of my cheeseburger analogy, I think of the, the extras, like what goes on your cheeseburger. Uh, and so the hotkey that I press for a comment in Visual Studio Code is I hold down control and I press the forward slash. If I hold down control and press the forward slash, uh, th that automatically puts in a nice little comment for me. And uh, so again, the head, uh, those are your extras. And what do I mean by extras? Um, maybe you can link to other files, other files, yeah, other files such as CSS or JavaScript. So you can link to files. You can put in your page title here. And so there's a, for example, a title tag. And if I were to look at this page that I've coded so far, you can see right here is where the title uh, will come up, up in the, the tab of the browser. And so uh, the HTML, these are your buns, right? It, everything goes inside of here. Uh, there's a head tag, which contains extras. Uh, and a cheeseburger, you're talking about your lettuce or your ketchup or your pickles or whatever you put on, on your cheeseburger. And then you got your body, which is your meat. Or uh, I guess you have veggie burgers, so you could say your black beans uh, for, for my vegetarians out there. Uh, and and that's that's the structure right here and and that's what helps me remember the structure now there's one thing that I left off on the slide and that's the doc type tag and so if I go back to the slide you can see the doc type tag and and you'll notice this tag is different because there's no closing tag so the doc type is uh, a standalone tag whoops so, so the doc type, I'll throw in a little comment here. Doc type uh, is uh, an empty tag. And, and an empty tag is simply a tag that, that doesn't have a separate closing tag. It, it's unique in that way. Notice I can click on the HTML on line three and it shows me on line 13 that it closes. On line four, it closes on line nine. On line 10, it closes on line 12. But on line two, on line two, it's just an opening tag, no closing tag. So that's that's referred to as a as a uh, empty tag. Um, if you're having connection issues, uh, again, I am recording this, and so uh, you know, don't stress it too bad. You might try and reboot your router, power down your computers, and reboot your router. That might help. But if you miss anything, I'm recording this, so so that's okay. Okay, so we got the doc type. Now, now the doc type actually does something for us. The doc type is actually important. Uh, the doc type tells the browser what version of HTML we are writing. And so, like everything else in the software world, there's all these different versions of HTML. Uh, the first popular version of HTML was in the 90s. It was version 4. And then um, in, in uh, I guess HTML 4 was around through the 90s. And in around 2000, they came out with a different version uh, that what they called XHTML. So version 4 was popular for about 10 years. Then XHTML came out, and, and that was popular from about 2000 to about 2010. And then around 2010, about, they go about 10 years, around 2010, HTML5 uh, became the standard. And so we've been in the industry using and writing HTML5 for about 10 years. Um, 
it's not perfect, but but it's it's the standard, and so that's that's what we're learning. We're learning HTML5. When we look at this doc type, that is the doc type for HTML5. Okay, HTML XHTML has a different doc type, and uh, in HTML4, I don't think there was a doc type originally for HTML4 because I was just a standard back then. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised that there is a doc type for HTML4 nowadays, but that's again that was a website from the 90s, so um, you don't really see that too much. So this is your template. Anytime you want to code uh, a website with HTML, you're going to start with something like this. Um, you might see on the HTML tag, notice I added something language equals English. Now, um, this is called an attribute. So an attribute is highlighted in yellow here. And um, what an attribute does, you can see this HTML is also an attribute because it's highlighted in yellow. Uh, it modifies the way a tag works just a little bit. And so uh, this language is English. Well, you know, HTML is coded in English. Kind of an interesting side note. If you want to, if, if, for example, um, you know, if, if you speak Spanish and, and you want to make a web page, you know, you have to know enough English uh, to, to, in other words, you can't code a HTML in Spanish. You have to code HTML in, in English. Uh, there's no Spanish version. Um, so if, if you want to uh, write HTML, you first got to learn English, and then, and then, uh, and then you could, you know, understand what what title actually means a little bit better. But uh, this informs the browser that, that you're, you're writing English. And, and so you, you see that attribute oftentimes. So again, we got tags, we got attributes. Attributes go inside of the tags and they modify the tag a little bit. Notice this doc type has an HTML attribute in yellow. Um, what that is, is typically our attributes have an equal sign and then a value inside of them but this one doesn't and so when when they don't have an equal sign and then quotes after them this is called a a boolean attribute okay now this this is all these are all terms that are going to be on the test and so again what's important you need to know what an attribute is that's going to be on the test you need to know what a boolean attribute is a boolean attribute the word boolean um means that the the value could be true or false and so the attribute here is the html attribute and then you can set this equal to true or you can set it equal to false okay but you know you never do that here and here you just leave this off and that's assumed to be true and so basically it says this is this is an html5 doc type that's that's assumed to be true and that's what it says to the browser Okay, so Boolean attribute, that's important. What is an attribute? That's important. Opening tag versus a closing tag. Those are all terms that are important to this, this chapter. Yeah, a Boolean attribute is, is, a, is an attribute that does not have an equal sign after it. And, and it is assumed to be true. Yeah, Boolean. Yep. So that is what a Boolean attribute is. It just it doesn't have an our all of our attributes have this convention where they have the name of the attribute followed by an equal sign followed by a value in quotes. So you know, if you look at some HTML5, uh, you know, you can see the HTML has a, a lang attribute. Here's another tag that I didn't include. Um, this is, let me explain this. So the meta tag, and notice this is in the head, so that's, that's the extras. So what this says is that the... 
And this is kind of a, a, a deep, a deeper concept than we really need to get into. But the character set, meaning what characters are understood by the computer, is UTF-8. And what that means is UTF-8 really means, even though we're writing all of our tags in English, all of our tags will be in English. This doesn't mean you can't write content in Spanish, right? Our tags, HTML is, is in English, okay? But what goes inside of the title tag here? You can write whatever language you want. And that's what UTF means. UTF-8 means that the computer or the, the, the browser needs to understand essentially all the characters of all the languages in the world. And, 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 you know, so you're talking about tens of thousands of characters, Chinese characters and, you know, just all the, literally all the, the, the characters of all the languages of the world. And so that's what the, the char set, the character set of UTF-8 means. And that's put inside of a, a, a meta tag, which again, it's just kind of like additional information. So if I put that up here, let's see how we type meta char set equals utf8 and you'll also notice that this uh, this tag is an empty tag right there's no closing tag on the meta tag and so you, you can see a couple other empty tags one of the most common empty tags that we write is the image tag there's also, uh, so if you want to put in an image, it looks like this. There's also a line break, a BR tag. Okay, there are examples of empty tags. And when you have an opening and a closing tag together and all the content between it, that's often referred to as an element. Okay, so an individual tag is an opening tag. So here we have an opening tag. Here we have a closing tag. When you have the opening and the closing tag together, you the, the term is called an element. That's an H1 element. Uh, an, an H1 is a heading tag. And a heading tag does uh, several things. Most people will notice on a heading tag, like if I code my, here I'll code a, uh, welcome. So I'll code an H1. Then I'll code a paragraph tag. Welcome to the third day of class. Okay, and you can see how Visual Studio is going to help us write our code, and that's why that's why it's a, a popular IDE. And if I open this page, you could see that the the heading tag obviously the text is bigger, so an H1 makes the text bigger. And H1 also makes the text bold. And so you, if you look at this font compared to that font, and H1 makes it, so a heading tag makes it bigger, so it adjusts the size of the font, it also makes it bold. And I would also tell you that we, we talked about chapter one about search engine optimization, SEO, and, and ways to make Google find your site and pay attention to your site and rank your, your site high. Um, heading tags are really important when it comes to SEO. Okay, Google will will look at your heading tags to understand what your page is about. So heading tags are important for that reason. Sorry, I don't understand, but I found something related. Do you want to know why the heading tags are useful? <laughs> I must have said the keyword for my smart speaker to respond. Sorry, I don't understand. Can you guys hear my, my Google speaker talking back to me? <laughs> uh, tell it to shut up. <laughs> I'm a, uh, I am a Google fanboy, admittedly. I have a Google, I have Google smart speakers all throughout my house. And it listens to me and I must have said a keyword. Everything going so far, folks? Don't have too many questions. 
hopefully the explanations are going smoothly. And again, some terminology here and just some fundamentals. Cool. You are and you will, you're allowed to and you will put tags inside of one another. And so that's called nesting, when you put one tag inside of another tag. And you can see an example here on slide seven of the correct way to nest versus the incorrect way to nest. And, and so when you open a tag and then you open a second tag, you need to close that second tag before closing the outer tag. I guess I would call this the outer tag and the inner tag. You need to close the inner tag before closing the outer tag. Notice the incorrect nesting is just the opposite. We open the paragraph, then we open the I tag. The, the I tag is, um, is a really old tag, but it still works. It's for italics. So if you want to make a font italic, there's other ways of doing it, more modern approaches, but it still works. Then we would close the paragraph. Obviously, that's, that's incorrect nesting. We would close the italics and then close the paragraph. Um, so what it boils down to is that there are, um, with HTML, you can write it in ways that are deemed invalid by the standard. Okay, so, so there's rules that we have to follow. One of those rules in HTML is to nest your tags in, in order. Another rule, now what happens if you don't? What happens if you do the incorrect nesting? So HTML is actually a really forgiving language, okay? Many languages that we'll learn are not nearly as forgiving as HTML. That's why it's a good first kind of language to learn um, because it's so forgiving. So you can do something incorrect like this and you might still get the results that you're looking for. When you look at the page in a browser, it might still work. And so that's a good thing. However, it could cause it could cause problems. You might not get the page that you're looking for. Your page might not look like you want it to. Also, if Google notices if Google notices you're not writing valid HTML, you're not likely going to be ranked highly on their search engine, okay, in their results, okay? So you wanna write correct code for search engine optimization. You wanna write valid code um, so that the page looks how you want it to look. Also, writing valid code will help your page to load faster. Uh, one, one reason why people leave you know, a website they've never been to before you know, as if the page is loading slow, they get frustrated and they leave. Okay, so, so again, writing valid HTML and in, in, in that is correct nesting. Another thing about valid HTML is having your template right. You have to have a doc type tag. You have to have the HTML, you know, element. You have to have the head element. You have to have the body element. The head has to be above the body. Okay, you have to have a title. So having having this template is part of writing valid HTML. Another thing that you'll notice, I'm not writing any tags in capital case. I'm not, you know, I'm not writing my paragraph tag like that. Now, Visual Studio Code let me do that. It's not it's not erroring out, but but every tag, every element should be lower cased no caps okay that's that's another rule when it comes to writing valid html yeah and uh evan you're answering that question correctly about uh the elements and they do not have to be on the same line they, they can be but like the title tag is an element and it's on the same line but the head tag is an element that's not you know line five you know going down to line 11. Remember that remember that the the tag itself 
is what immediately follows the less than symbol. So, so we got the less than angle bracket followed by the A tag. The A tag uh, stands for the anchor tag. Um, one of the key features of HTML is the anchor tag. And one of the key one of the features means that uh, the anchor tag is simply how you make links. Uh, links to other web pages, like if you want to link to YouTube, or if you want to link to uh, another page on your website. So internal links, external links, the anchor tag is how we do it. Attributes modify the tag. So this is the href attribute that belongs to the anchor tag. The href attribute basically says where we're linking to. In this case, the the anchor tag links to a page called contact. So this would be this would be an internal link, like you're linking to a page on your site. And here we have three attributes. We've got the, the href attribute, and by the way, href hyperlink reference. Href is short for hyperlink. That's what href stands for. We're linking, we're referencing this other, this other page, contact.html. So href is short for hyperlink reference, just what it is. This anchor tag has a title attribute. The title attribute, if you were to hover the mouse over the title attribute, you would get uh, a little pop-up. And, and that pop-up would be like a tool tip and it would say click to contact us. And then there's a class attribute that uh, we'll learn what a class is here when we get into CSS. Okay, I'll come back. I'll come back to the class attribute uh, later on in this lecture. And it says, note, closing tags never contain attributes. So if I look at my Closing HTML tag, no attribute. Closing body, no attribute. Closing head tag, no attribute. It's only the opening tags that have attributes. Yeah, uh, Dylan, the slideshow is available in your repository, in your repo. So if you, if you cloned your repository yesterday, you can find the slideshow in that repo. Yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a folder for the for the textbook called uh, HTML fourth edition and then you'll find the you'll find the slideshow in there okay now again this is called an empty tag the image tag is probably the most common empty tag you might occasionally see image tags like this okay that's still referred to as an empty tag and in prior versions of HTML Having this little slash here was necessary um, for you to write valid HTML. In HTML5, you don't have to have that slash here. In HTML5, you could leave that slash off, okay? And and it's still considered valid. Um, let me undo, undo, undo. This is still considered valid HTML. Just realize, um, even me personally, you know, because I, I really... I've gone through the versions. Like I've written HTML4 in my lifetime. I've written XHTML in my lifetime. I had to, you know, learn it. And when I learned XHTML, I learned that that was that little slash was mandatory. And so, like, out of habit, I sometimes still do that, even though it's not necessary and it doesn't break anything. It's still it's still an empty tag. But just a heads up, you might see that, and you might see that out of me, and that's fine. Okay. And here's what a, another example of a Boolean attribute. So some terms there we already covered. Now, two common attributes that you'll see on HTML tags are the ID tag uh, attribute and the class attribute and if you you notice here it says for identifying HTML elements 
and so let's 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 look at the the anchor tag you know remember that an anchor tag is a link well you could have a whole bunch of links on your page you could have 10 links you could have 20 30 50 100 i don't know you know what the average number of links on a page is but suffice to say there's plenty of them and so when you have a whole bunch of links it might benefit you to give them like names essentially you're naming your links and what you could do when you name your links is you could say okay well I want this link to be blue and I want this link to be red so you can begin to style them differently when you name them so if you want to give uh, something a unique name you give it an ID and so the the theory is that in an HTML document only one tag has has a unique ID so IDs are meant to be unique versus a class uh, a class is kind of like a shared name and so if you wanted if you had if you had a hundred links and you wanted 50 of them to be blue you could give those 50 links a class they could all have the same class they could share it so classes can be shared names IDs are unique names it's almost like your social security is a unique number social security number um, but you know how many billies are there in the world uh, Billy is uh, you know it, you could have multiple uh, names that are the same and so if you want to uniquely identify a tag you give it an ID attribute if you want to give it a shared name you could give it a class and we will definitely work with IDs and classes and so that's a it's a good concept to be familiar with okay we got one more slide and then we kind of hit a new concept uh, which is CSS yeah I can the question is can I explain a div tag it's a good question what is a div tag so here's a div tag so div tags really became popular from what I could tell with XHTML and a div simply is a division of the page uh, so you divide your page up into different sections a division or section and so I might have a div with an ID of footer and then and then the idea here is that this is going to be the content at the bottom of the page and so we're creating a division or a section of the page that's meant to be at the bottom of of the page in the browser um, so that's what a div tag is now div tags are less common in HTML5 because this in HTML5 has been replaced with this there's a tag now just simply called footer and we know what footer is it's supposed to be at the bottom of the page but there are still plenty of div tags so a div tag is a generic tag I, I would even say a generic it's a generic tag because you can you can give it whatever ID you want and do whatever you want with it so it's 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 generic Andrew, does that answer your question? Great. Good question. You'll notice inside of my tags, inside of my HTML tag, which again, this, this was the buns. The HTML tag were the buns. Everything that's nested inside of my HTML tag is indented over notice how they're indented over by two spaces we set that setting up yesterday inside of the head tag notice they're indented by two spaces 
So that's called formatting. This white space right here, it's ignored by the browser. So this is really just formatting that helps you look at the code, right? This, this formatting with the indenting, this white space, just helps, helps you read the code. You could condense this down, but it'd be a lot harder to read. And so what I mean by condensing it, you could put it all on less lines. This is a heck of a lot harder to read, especially if you wind up side scrolling. No one likes side scrolling. Who likes side scrolling? No one. If you like side scrolling, I need to change your opinion. <laughs> That's terrible. No one likes that. That's hard to read. So, so this white space, I'm gonna undo all that, um, is good practice. And we have a tool called Prettier that we downloaded. It was we downloaded this extension that if we're not writing if we're not writing a clean code, clean source code with with good white spacing and things of that nature, we can format document. So notice when I right click the page format document and the first time you do this you gotta select now we downloaded two we downloaded beautify and we downloaded prettier so I'm gonna choose beautify uh, they're, they're both they both do the same thing they just work a little differently I'm gonna recommend beautify for your formatting of your HTML okay and it formatted my document a little bit um, and it, it kinda just uh, helps for the readability purposes of reading your code. Um, so again, the, the important thing here is that the white space is ignored by the browser. The tabs, the spaces, the comments are all ignored by the browser. And you'll notice here on this slide, you can, you can make a comment like I've been doing here but if there's a tag that all of a sudden you don't want like notice how I'm gonna click right here on line 15 and if I hit control forward slash which is my hotkey it comments out the entire element so now if I you know view it in the browser it gets rid of that tag just temporarily until I bring it back if I hit if I hit control forward slash again it brings it back and it updates it on the go like uh, control forward slash control s to save bring the page back up it's gone so you don't have to close the browser like I've been doing okay so there's there's a lot that we've covered there a lot of terms but um, you know individually I don't think any of these concepts are too hard but but there are a lot of them so again uh, first exposure to this is a lecture tonight I ask you to read you'll do some homework we're gonna get plenty of practice with this now uh, I've been going for about 45 minutes so I like to give a break about every 45 minutes or so uh, I think it's been 45 minutes so I'm gonna pause the recording and give a break here so here goes the pause okay so the recording is back live we're back from break and I'm going to uncomment out the paragraph that I've been demonstrating uh, we're gonna learn so these these are all the the fundamentals of HTML we learned again for, for the test you gotta know what an empty tag is you gotta know what an empty tag is you gotta know what an attribute is uh, you gotta know uh, an HTML comment what, are, what does that look like? How to code that? You gotta understand that white space really plays no effect 
in the browser doesn't make a change on the page just by adding white spaces and tabs and things of that nature and by pressing enter I could press enter 10 times and that's not gonna that's not gonna change anything on as far as how the page looks um, and so those are all things that you'll need to know for the test now there's also um, there's also remember HTML is for content and for structure there's another language that we're gonna learn in this class called CSS so I'm gonna click on new file here I'm gonna call this my styles .css. the stream is paused okay uh, let me see why that is. Swap your application to resume. It says you have it minimized. Oh. How about now? Now we're good. Cool. So I'm going to undo this. Let me delete this file. Okay. Good. Sorry about that. Here's our paragraph tag. I uncommented that out. We're also going to learn today a little bit about CSS. So over here in the folder, I'm going to create a new file. Call it styles.css. You see you get the little icon for CSS3. So our version of HTML is HTML5. CSS is version 3. If I were to just look at this page right now, it's again not too much to it. But it looks like so. In fact, let me I was thinking about split screening there, but I think I'll avoid that. So HTML is written one way, with tags and elements, opening, closing tags. CSS is written a different way. Um, CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheet. Remember, its purpose is for formatting or the looks of our page. And uh, literally, the word style uh, is is what it does. It styles our web page. Uh, CSS has rules. HTML has tags. A rule looks like this. A rule starts with a selector, and so the selector is what we're changing. In this case, our selector is the H1 tag. I know that my HTML document has an H1 tag. So what I'm saying is we're selecting that that H1 tag. In fact, we're selecting all of the H1 tags. Then it has curly braces. Then it has a property. Then it has a value. That's a whole bunch of things. So we got the selector here. We've got our curly braces. The property is what we're changing. So in this case, I want to change the color of my H1 tags. And then a semicolon followed by a value. In this case, a value of blue. This is a CSS rule. So selector, property, value so so the idea here is that my h1 goes to blue and you might wonder well wait a minute that didn't work here I am I'm, I've saved my file I'm trying to refresh my file and the h1 doesn't go blue well these are separate files the HTML is separate from the CSS 
So in order for this CSS to be applied, we have to link it to our HTML. So up here in the head, remember we said link to other files like CSS or JavaScript. So there's a link tag with an href attribute where we can point it to styles.css. There's a type attribute that says that this is a CSS file. And this is essentially what that looks like. So this is how you, you link these two files together. You link the two files together by on the HTML giving it a link tag. Remember the anchor tag has an href attribute? And I didn't have an anchor tag in this document, but we covered it in the PowerPoint. There's also an href attribute that belongs on the link tag. So link href. The type attribute says that this is a CSS file, so just provides more information. And the rel attribute is, uh, is short for relevance. Um, which just means, hey, this is this is a style sheet. This is, and what kind of style sheet is a cascading style sheet? So, um, I believe. So I always code it just like this. Um, the the textbook might might skip some of these attributes, so they're not exactly mandatory. But I'll, I'll cover that when we get into the slides. Um, now, if I look at it now our heading goes blue and so our style is being applied so again kind of review here CSS has a selector maybe I select my paragraph lowercase paragraph then you have curly braces inside the curly braces you have a property so maybe the the paragraphs property is color so what are we changing about the paragraph and then what are we changing it to property selector value property what are we changing what are we changing about it is the property and then what are we changing it to is the value I'll do another one a body selector you know we have the body tag so any of our tags can be selectors so any of our HTML tags inside the body can be selectors so body can be a tag h1 can be a tag paragraph this div can be a selector any any tag including the body inside of the body or the body itself can be a selector so with the body I'll do a different property here I'll do background hyphen color black. So that changes the background color of the body to be black. Okay, so you can see what CSS is used for. You can see it's used for styling. You know the different parts of a CSS rule include a selector, which is what you're selecting part of the HTML. You're, you're modifying part of the HTML. The property is what are you modifying about it, and the value is what you're changing it to. You're changing it. Now, not necessarily important, but rules, this is a rule, can have this piece right here, which is the, the property and the value together. It's also called a declaration. Right? You can have multiple declarations. I could say paragraph um, font weight bold. And so I can change my I can change my paragraph to be bold. Point being is you're, you can change multiple, and I can add in some white space for readability purposes. So I like to do maybe something like this. 
this white space does not change the behavior. It just makes it a little bit more readable. So you can have multiple declarations inside of a CSS rule, and they're separated by semicolons, right? Selector, property, value. Selector, property, value. Property, value. Selector, property, value. So those terms, obviously, I'm repeating them so much, are important terms. So these are the terms that we just covered. Big part of this class is learning what are all the different selectors, um, more so what are the different properties and their accepted values. So um, we'll learn a whole lot of different properties and when we learn a property, you know, what are their valid values? Like, can I put the number two here? Does that work? You know. Uh, that, that could be a different value. So bold is accepted, but what are the different accepted values? Okay. So a CSS comment, as I believe I showed, um, can be on one line, or here's a demonstration. This is almost, um, this is a multi-line comment. This really grabs your attention. This highlighted comment section up here, um, that's a multi-line comment and so if I wanted to do a multi-line comment I would just so this is a multi-line comment so opening comment closing comment or you could put it all on the same line and if you want to decorate it you just put more stars but that's not necessary. So that's a multi-line comment versus a single line comment. And again, comments are for developers um, to document, you know, who wrote something, what's, what's this page all about. <clears throat> now, I mentioned before that CSS has rules and that the first part of a rule is a selector. I also mentioned that HTML has identifying uh, attributes. And so notice here I've got two H1s. And if I pull up my page, you see I've got my two H1s and they're both blue. The way this works is that this is changing the color to blue for all my H1s. But maybe I don't want all of my H1s to be blue. Maybe I just want this top one to be blue. One way I could do that is by giving it an ID attribute. Call it top heading. Notice they're still blue, so I have to change my CSS. Instead of selecting all the H1s, I can select something with an ID by giving it like an ID number. So this is how you select an ID, is by giving it the uh, pound symbol. Um, obviously a lot of people call that the hashtag, but it's the pound symbol. And you have to type in the name of your ID here, top heading. So the ID is top heading, case sensitive, capital H, top heading, color blue. Now if I go back to my page, now you can see the top one is blue, the bottom one is still black, so you got black on black, so it hides it. If I highlight it, you can see it, right? Obviously you need a different font color for that bottom one or you need to change the background color, so that's not, that's not happening, okay? So we can, we can select any element in the body or the body itself, we can select something with an ID or the third thing that we can select is a class. So if I put a couple paragraphs here, 
look at the page. Notice all my paragraphs are red. That's because they're red and bold right here. But remember, an ID is supposed to be unique. A class can be shared. So I'll say class of shared. I'll just call it shared. You can call a class whatever you want. I'm going to call this class shared. And I'm going to make shared be the first and the last. I'm going to put this class of shared. Whoops. So notice my first paragraph and my third paragraph are shared. And now, instead of changing all the paragraphs, now for an ID, you have to select it with the pound symbol. For a class, it's done with a period. And then the name of the class. And so this is how we're going to change now just those two paragraphs to be red and bold instead of all three. And again, second paragraph is black. And so going back to our PowerPoint here, you see elements can be selected by type. That's by the element type. So the paragraph is a type, the div tag is a type, body is a type. These are, these are the types. By ID or by class. And this slide 16 demonstrates how to select, again, something by ID how to select something by class. This would be an ID of copyright. This would be an ID, a class of base color. Right? These are all CSS rules. Selectors, properties, values, and declarations. All those terms. All those terms are important. Not only for the test. Those terms are important because we will use those terms as long as you're coding HTML. Um, and if you're making a website, you're coding HTML more than likely. Unless you're dragging and dropping, which is not what we're learning to do. Right? So they show you what, what it looks like in a browser. I kind of demonstrated that. Um, we don't use this brackets tool. So this, this section about brackets, I'm not going to have any test questions about brackets. You can skip this section. Uh, brackets is the last IDE that that was used in this class. Um, we use Visual Studio Code instead. So don't worry, I'm not going to ask you questions about opening files on brackets or anything like that. I'm, I'm going to remove that from the test. So don't worry about brackets and extension manager. Um, now, this is an important slide because it just talks about common mistakes. And, and a lot of times, uh, common mistakes, um, you can't avoid them um, because it's just part of the learning process to mess up and then, and then learn you know, from your mess ups. And so, um, but if, if you can learn from other people and learn from, um, then, then you might be able to avoid some of that pain. Um, and so, you know, like a, most tags have opening and closing tags. So what's nice is that Visual Studio, you know, helps you with that. If I, if I open up a span tag, it'll close the span tag automatically for me. So, so Visual Studio helps avoid that. Um, misspelling a tag or attribute names, I mean, you could come over here and call it share. And if this is called share, but the class is called shared with the D, then none of it works. None of the paragraphs turn red. Um, so, so misspelling things is a common mistake. Um, so, so again, that causes some pain. Uh, quotation marks that aren't paired, obviously opening quotes and closing quotes here. If you forget a closing quote, that can cause all sorts of issues. Notice that the color coding here, like all of our content is white in our text, but if I missed a quote, all that turned green and that turned red, right? So a lot of times you can find mistakes quickly by paying attention to the colors. The, the colors are really important and that'll help you to find mistakes. If I add that quote back in, notice everything goes back to normal. The tags are blue. The text is white. 
The attributes are this uh, yellowish, orangish, I don't even know what color that is. This green, the values of our attributes are green. I guess that's more of an orange than a yellow. Um, the name of the file, notice over here, I created a file called style.css. So the file name is styles. The file extension is .css. Well, I have to type that in correctly here. If I don't link it correctly, of course, there's no styling. So again, that's kind of a typo situation. Watch what happens if I get rid of this type attribute. It still works. See if I get rid of the rel attribute. All of a sudden, it doesn't work. So the type attribute is not mandatory, but that rel certainly is. If I add rel back in, all of a sudden it works. So the type is not mandatory, but rel is mandatory. Same thing with CSS, you have to have opening and closing curly braces, you can't be missing semicolons or pro misspelling anything, and then IDs and classes have to match. Again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get rid of um, the question specifically about brackets, but this is a, these are concepts about, okay, how do I open a web page that you're, you're developing on your computer? Well, the first thing is it says use your browser to do file open. You know, Chrome doesn't have file open on it. Um, you might be able to open a file in Chrome directly by clicking on options. I obviously never do this. This is not the common way of opening a local file. Maybe find, no. Suffice to say, if you can find the open option, you could browse to it on your local computer. Most of the time, you're just gonna right click the HTML, open it with live server. That's how you're gonna launch the page. Open it with Live Server, then it's going to open up in Google Chrome. Assuming you have Chrome installed, make sure to have Chrome installed. The other way that's common is by browsing to it in Windows Explorer. This little icon down here on a Windows machine is called uh, File Explorer. I called it Windows Explorer. File Explorer, go to your desktop. Go to your coursework, go to, I think I put this in homework, chapter one homework. Where did I put this? Oh, I put this in chapter one lab. I'm gonna go back out, labs, chapter one lab. There's the file. except that's not my, let me delete this repo. That's, I got two repos on my computer. Let me delete that one. That's not the one. My repo that I've been working on is in here. Wrong folder. Lab, chapter one. There it is. There's my HTML file. There's my CSS file. Double click it and it opens up the HTML. Let me delete that repo that I'm not using. Now what's nice with live server is if you make a change and you're looking at the page in live preview. So let me launch the HTML. And there's hotkeys for this. Alt L O. So let me hold Alt L O. It launches the page. And if I change the source code, Welcome to Rankin. I'm gonna hit save, file, save, or control S. 
and then I go back to the source code, you notice it refreshes automatically. So if you keep the browser window open using Live Server, you don't have to manually refresh. In the old days, you would have to make a change in the HTML and then go back into the browser window and click on refresh sometimes three or four times to get the change to show up. Okay, but Live Server kind of helps us with that problem. We don't have that problem anymore. So this is how to refresh pressing F5 or reload. Um, but here it says, you know, we're, we have a tool that'll do that automatically for us. Not too many questions. I know I'm covering this kind of with lots of demonstrations. I think the demonstrations help, but um, now two more concepts, which is how to how to fix the problems when they come up. You know, when you when you got a problem with your HTML, the first thing that you're going to do is you are going to just go back to the source code and try and find the problem. Maybe you got a quote, missing a quote here. Let's just say that's your problem. And notice the result of the page is pretty, breaks. Let me launch this page again. So this is what happens. If I miss that quote, this is the result. So clearly something's broken. And what you want to do is I would come in here and I'd, I'd look for the, the looking at the colors. It's pretty clear to me that it's in this area, right? And um, so, so look at the color coordination. Um, that'll give you some tips as far as where the problem could be. A lot of times when you write the code, it's hard for you to find the mistakes. It's in our nature to overlook problems in our own code. I think naturally um, we tend to think that we didn't make the mistake. We tend to think the mistake is outside of us. We tend to blame we tend to blame the computer. We tend to blame the browser. It's in our nature to not find the mistake because we think that we didn't make a mistake. And so realizing, number one, that that's probably not the case. Probably you did make a mistake somewhere. And if you realize that, that you probably made the mistake, then it's going to cause you to go back and look more critically at your code. Because typically what we tend to do is you just tend to, you tend to scan the page for mistakes and not look critically and look hard at, look hard for a mistake. So that's a big part of it. Sometimes if, if you have the luxury of uh, someone else, um, if, if you're really spinning your wheels, you know, uh, well, obviously I, I'm that person that can help you, right? So, so if, you, if you look for the mistake, you can't find it, you could always obviously ask for help. Now, another tool is the validator. So personally, what I do is I look at my code for about you know five minutes. And if I can't find the mistake, I'll go to the validator because the validator can oftentimes find a mistake and tell me, tell me what that mistake is. So if I go into my validator, this is an HTML validator. I can click on index.html and click check. And this has no errors or warnings. Um, if I do this, let's see what it does. So I'll bring the error back in. Let me click on that file again. So here's something that's interesting. This validator says no space between attributes. And it told me right here Line 16 has an error. And it even highlighted that it thinks there should be a, a quotation there. You know what's interesting is I had one mistake with my code and it showed me nine errors. So that's common. One mistake oftentimes shows up as many. So what you do is you just 
you really focus on the first mistake. You fix one mistake at a time, starting with the first mistake. And it does a pretty decent job at telling you what that could be. And actually, actually, it, it tells you more of the area. Line 16 isn't the problem. It identified line 16 as the problem. Really, it's line 15 that's the problem. So I always say that the validator tells you around where the problem is, but it, it has a difficult time telling you exactly what the problem is. Okay, so that's, but, but the validator is a good tool to help you find the area of where the problem could be. Okay, another thing that the validator is going to do is, you know, validate your code to make sure that you're following all the rules of HTML. Okay, so the, the URL for this validator, if you saw, is validator.w3.org. Okay, and, and this will be something that I ask you to do not only in lab, but also uh, in homework and also on tests. You're going to have to write, you know, valid HTML. So you'll, your code will have to pass the validation service. And what you do is you click on validate by file upload. Then you browse to the file on your hard drive. And then you click on check. And when you get this green no errors, then, then you're in good condition. CSS also has a validator. It's at a different URL. So the HTML validator is here. I always search for, it's jigsaw.w3.org. I don't know what the jigsaw, where that comes from. I think that's the, the name of a, uh, What's that? Saw? Isn't that a scary movie called Saw? I think Jigsaw is a bad guy. That's the only thing that Jigsaw means to me. So in other words, I don't know what that is. Click on my styles.css, click on check. No errors found. That's what you're looking for. Okay, folks. So that is... the fundamentals of HTML and the fundamentals of CSS. There was a lot covered in there. Um, your reading assignment, anytime you see this reading assignment on Perusal, that's just read chapter two. So your homework tonight is to read chapter two. I'm also gonna open up, tonight I'm gonna open up the homework on Inside Rankin. Okay, so I, I will open up the homework on Inside Rankin. We've got about 40 minutes. So uh, I'm going to stop this recording here. Obviously, answer any questions before we go. Um, but I, I'm also going to stick around so you guys can start working on your homework. Now, your homework is due at the start of class tomorrow. So there will be a grade for everybody on Inside Rankin for a homework grade. So we can take a look at that as a class. Let me go ahead and stop the recording. Any questions before I stop the recording? I think now is a good time for questions. I typically ask questions about these uh, objectives, but um, with this recording, it's kind of uh, not ideal to do that. Like in the classroom environment, I would say, you know, have people raise their hand and answer some of these questions. But remote, you could just rewatch the recording. Let me go ahead and close the PowerPoint. So tonight you're reading chapter two and you are doing your first homework assignment. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording now.